We have two reports looking at today's sell-offs. Bob Pisani wraps up the market action at the New York Stock Exchange. But first, here's Jackie DeAngelis on what's behind the latest drop in oil. Oil prices in free fall. Traders who had called the bottom now ducking for cover. The reason behind today's plunge, outlook revisions for next year. OPEC revising down its demand forecast while its production remains at over 30 million barrels a day. The Energy Information Administration trimming its output forecast, but only by 100,000 barrels. Over 9 million barrels a day is still very robust. Add to that weekly inventory data from the Department of Energy that showed another 1.5 million barrel build in supply and prices tanked more than 4.5% to $60.94. So how low can oil go before the end of the year? Many traders see the 50s in the market's future. This market uh, seems to be getting one bearish news item after another as we trade lower even. So brokers on the floor and traders on the floor we're looking at $50 now as the bottom for crude oil, and we expect that to happen uh, in early January. And that's a revision down uh, from where we thought prices were going to go just a couple of months ago. And add insult to injury, Goodrich Petroleum saying it may have to sell some of its shale assets to boost liquidity. Analysts saying that other companies are going to have to follow suit to strengthen their balance sheets. What this tells the market is that small producers are worried. A slew of companies, including Goodrich, lowering capital spending budgets for 2015. Investment in drilling and exploration projects just don't seem to make sense in this environment. While cheap oil helps companies and consumers keep their costs low, it's going to hit the oil patch where it hurts. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Jackie DeAngelis. The stock market again proved very sensitive to two issues, the decline in oil and slower global growth concerns. There were new 52-week lows all over the energy space today, including big names like Chevron, the drillers like Transocean, exploration and production names like Noble, all of them down about 3 or 4 percent. Now, there is plenty of collateral damage from lower oil. Canadian bank stocks like Royal Bank of Canada or Bank of Nova Scotia, both involved in financing Canadian energy plays, were all down about 3 percent. Commodity countries are also getting hit on the lower growth concerns. So exchange-traded funds associated with Russia and South Africa and Canada, they were all down 2 or 3 percent. Not surprisingly, other commodity stocks also appeared on the 52-week low list, including iron ore names like BHP Billiton and Vale, as well as copper giant Freeport McMoran. Slower growth in China and a crackdown on high rollers in Macau has dropped Las Vegas Sands and Wynn, both big in the China gaming market, to new lows as well. Now, will these declines continue? Well, oil is lower mostly on supply issues, not dramatically lower demand. Slower global growth is definitely an issue, but many stock markets outside the U.S. already reflect that slower growth. Now, with all these concerns, it's hard to argue that lower oil is bad for stocks or the U.S. economy. The S&P remains close to its historic highs, even with the energy sector down 15 percent, and even while oil is down 40 percent this year. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Bob Pisani at the New York Stock Exchange.